Good morning. Welcome to Gilead Lutheran Church. Um, as you can see, uh, the rain has decided that we should be inside for a week. Uh, announcements. Thursday will be pantry from 3 to 5. Also, September 11th, I believe it is. That's Saturday. Yes, September 11th is the chicken barbecue. Um, if you have not raised your reservations, please, please do so. The sense to sell out. And again, it's from 4 to 6 p.m. Does anybody else have any other announcements? No? Enjoy your work. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mommy. I was just going to say prayers for the Joe McMahon family. Who? Joe McMahon. He passed away last night. All right. Everybody, please pray for the Joe McMahon family as he passed away last evening. Enjoy your worship. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have punished the sin and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not held you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will. And walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you of all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God. He bestows on them the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Well, the sheriff with each other a sign of that peace in whichever way that you are comfortable doing so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's join in our gathering hymn this morning. It's number 494 in the Lutheran Book of Worship. Three book. Jesus calls us for it.
hearts of all your children, a longing for your words and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven, and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. Today's first reading is taken from 2 Kings, 4th chapter, 42 to 44. A man came from Baal Shalisa, bringing the food from the first fruits to Elisha, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people, let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He said it before them, They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Here is the first reading. The psalm is 145, found on page 286. We'll read it together. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They may be known the glory of your kingdom and see of your power, that the people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures for us throughout the ages. The Lord is faithful in all the Lord's and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all lead upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand. And satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The second reading is taken from the Ephesians, the third chapter. For this reason I bow my knee before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and you know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Cannot be brought under control by humans. 
It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias, and a large crowd following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw such a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? He said this to test them, because he knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each to them, uh, for them to have just a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? And Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down about 5,000 in all. And then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. He filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and started across the Sea of Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. This is the Gospel of the Lord. It is I do not be afraid. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This past week, Radio Classics on satellite radio has been running a Christmas in July theme all week long. Basically, it's uh, episodes of old time, old time radio shows, both comedies and dramas, mainly from the golden age of radio of the 40s and 50s, which centered on Christmas things. I am too young. I really love saying that. I am too young. Uh, anyway, I am too young to remember when those shows were first run on the radio. I do remember, however, being a kid in the 60s. Yes, I guess I'm that young too. Anyway, going to the small rustic church in the town of Grove Lake in Fulton County in the summertime, uh, which is basically only open for worship in the summer on Sundays from Memorial Day weekend to Labor Day weekend. See, my grandfather had a camp there, and other than going to Johnstown and Lowesville, this little chapel felt very nice things, thank you. I mean, it was sort of like any kind of leftover things that you could make a church out of it was. None of the pews really back. Some of them did. All the chairs mismatched all over the place. It was, but it was nice. It had this big oil furnace and whatnot going on on cool summer mornings. But you got to remember, this is technically in the other but one of the things um, I also noticed that uh, in July, they always had a sort of a Christmas in July stewardship campaign. Because being a seasonal chapel, they would never be open on Christmas. And 
when typically and uh, traditionally a large offering would be collected. But there's also another Christmas thing I remember about the 60s, and I think it lasted a couple of decades after that. It might even have made it to the turn of the century. I'm not really sure. But I'm pretty sure that you probably remember the billboards uh, that the Freibacher Baking Company would put up every year around the holidays. It featured the image of that young blonde sunbeam girl eating a slice of buttered sunbeam bread on a starlit background with one star brighter than the others and the caption read, not by bread alone, with three dots after the word alone. Of course, that, those dots alluded to the rest of the biblical verse out of Matthew 4, verse 4, which reads, Man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Familiar words, to be sure, but maybe, just maybe we never gave it uh, any kind of deeper thought other than God's an important aspect in our lives. But over the uh, next several weeks, like I mentioned, the Gospel readings aside, we'll focus solely on John chapter 6. And six times this subject will be bread. Not just any bread, but the bread of life. Oddly enough, that not by bread alone passage is not included in John's Gospel, where Jesus is discourse about bread that we'll hear in the Gospel readings from John in the coming weeks. But that's okay, as there is plenty of other bread references to expand on. Like I said, you get six of them so. In fact, here's one that happens even before the miracle, or as John the Evangelist calls, signs, that occurs in today's Gospel passage. You might have uh, overlooked it in the anticipation of that miracle or sign that's happening. So let's take another look at just one of the verses in the Gospel, verse 10. Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was plenty of grass in the place, so they sat down. Sound familiar? Maybe something from the Old Testament? You could be saying, sure, well, we had that first reading this morning from Ezekiel. They talked about, you know, bread and things like that. But the thing is, the first time of the Gospel, nobody's eating anything yet. I'll repeat verse 10 to you, and then give you the Old Testament verse kind of matches up with it. Okay, I'll even give you a little hint. It's from the book of Psalms. <coughs> and in fact, it was the sign that was a sign for last Sunday. In verse 10. Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down. And that similar verse from the Psalms, He makes me lie down in green pastures. Yep, corresponds very nicely with Psalm 23. For indeed, Jesus in today's Gospel reading is actually being the Good Shepherd who not only makes his people lie down in green pastures, or as it states in today's Gospel passage, that there was a great deal of grass there, but that God also provides more than enough, as verse 11 testifies. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to all who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. Sounds like 23 again. You spread a table before me, and my cup runneth over. Indeed, there is an abundance when it comes to Jesus being the bread of life. And it isn't a one-time only shot like we heard in today's gospel. True, the thousands of people who were witnesses and recipients of this miracle or sign wanted more, more, more. But they were more focused on the bread aspect rather than on the bread of life aspect. Like it basically states in the Gospel, after they were fed and all the leftovers were collected, the people realized that God was at work among them and what Jesus had just done. They said, this is a prophet for sure. God's prophet right here in Galilee. And Jesus saw in their enthusiasm that they were about to grab him and make him king. Hmm. Grab him and make him king. They said it, but folks, that's not what Jesus' ministry and mission was or is all about. 
But instead, for those gathered who were made to lie down in green pastures, and had, for all intents and purposes, had a table spread before them, and their cups running over with abundance to eat, you find yourself getting caught up in the moment. You then realize what just happened. You agree with everyone around you that this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Then that this is the prophet for sure, God's prophet right here in Galilee. So you figure that if he can do things like feed us and cure our sick and all these other signs, well, you heard that he did. Not to mention hearing those words that he spoke, how they went to your very heart and soul. Well, the only logical thing to do is make him king. Yeah, that's big. that makes perfect sense. Let's make him king. After all, he's he's got to be the person that the prophets have foretold that would be coming to us. However, we cannot delay. Time is of, of essence because you know he travels from town to town. So if we're going to make him king, it needs to be done immediately. But when you get together with others and head up to where he was, yeah. you don't find him. Just the apostles. But Jesus is nowhere to be seen. Where did he go? Didn't he hear that he really wanted to make him king? He must have known that. But he realized that all you need to do is follow him. But that was the problem. They only wanted to physically follow him. And only for their own selfish purposes. Indeed, the 5,000 plus crowd, though, wanted immediacy. They wanted more miracles. They wanted more signs. And if we make him king, well, we can kiss those Roman occupiers. Goodbye, good riddance. So we better follow him. We better find him and follow him. My brothers and sisters in Christ, what about us? Are we trying to find him? And more importantly, why are we trying to find him? Are we trying to find him so that he can fix everything? Well, an occasional miracle would help, like those that we heard in today's gospel. Following Jesus, it's an ongoing process. It's a lifelong process. No one fixes. So I ask you, are you still interested? Are we like a multitude wondering what Jesus can do for us? Wanting to follow Jesus? Sure. But for all the wrong reasons? Seeking something immediate and short-sighted like bread? but not the bread of life, which is eternal, or immediate and short-sighted, like our own needs and wants, but not those of our neighbors. We don't even care about the neighbors. We've got to look out for number one. <coughs> no, it doesn't work like that. If we are to follow Jesus, remember this. Wasn't Jesus' ministry focused on others? Remember, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Okay. And indeed, the words that come out of the mouth of God are truly fulfilling and truly life-sustaining. And so it just makes sense that we follow Jesus always, and more importantly, for all the right reasons so that we can put into practice those words we hear, that they become for each one of us an integral part of who we are, the bread of life, and a true follower of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs> Our hymn of the day is number 235, 235, Break Down the Bread of Life.
hand. He is second into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge us to the living dead. I believe you will most spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. I will end each petition with, Hear us, O God, please respond with, Your mercy is great. We pray for the Church, bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations, empower churches throughout the world, and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know Your loving works. Hear us, O God. We pray for creation, send rain to lands experiencing drought, and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops for the nourishment of your people, and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Hear us, O God. We pray for those who govern. Cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who to, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger will be fed. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy is great. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed. Those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing, whether of mind or body or spirit, including those dealing with addictions and those who are struggling in abusive relationships. We especially lift up those in need of your healing touch, whether listed in our bulletin or if they are in our thoughts at this moment. Hear us, O God. We pray for this assembly here at Gillian Lutheran Church. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we don't have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, O God. All knowing God, we now lift up to you in silence those hopes and concerns that you alone can see written upon our hearts at this moment. Hear us, O God. And we give thanks for those who have died. As you sustain them through all their days, so dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is free. And we lift up these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we prepare for Holy Communion, we thank you for your gifts this morning. Uh, so please be seated. <laughs>
Almighty God, that you have nourished us through the sealing power of this gift of life. We pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift and faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as you go from this place, go knowing that you are saved by grace. You are justified. You are forgiven. You are sought out, beloved, hidden in Christ, and made for the glory of God. You are known. You are never, ever forsaken. You are held in the palm of God's hand. You are so loved. May the peace and power of our God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, not just this day, but every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
And now go in peace, love, and serve the Lord by serving one another. Thanks.